Derek Yan is the senior investment strategist at Crane Shares, and he, along with a very special friend, are joining us here down on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. I caught the wave out of the corner of my eye. Derek, thanks for being here. Good to have you back. Thank you for having me. So for anyone who's watching this, um, it might be a little difficult for them not to notice. There's also something else. Someone else may be joining us. Yep. Um, what is this for people who are unfamiliar? Well, we partner with RoboStore. We have this coid bot. It's really to demonstrate like how like the capability of humanoid nowadays. So at Creatures, we launched the first global humanoid and embodied AI ETF. The ticker is coid. So that's why we put a coid, uh, also the name of the humanoid. Yeah. That's really like impressive. Now, yeah, you and I have met before. We actually saw this robot here a couple weeks ago outside of the New York Stock Exchange, got a sense on how it moves, what it does. Talk to me about why you think this is a great, very cool and different representation of the underlying ETF that I know you, you're, uh, you're very much focused on. Yeah, we see like humanoids like EVs like 10 years ago. So we see like humanoids gonna be working at a factory, warehouses, and like maybe our home one day, we're gonna see this everywhere, right? So Morgan Stanley think there will be one billion unit of humanoid that's up to $5 trillion total just for market by 2050. So we think the investor need a solution to really invest in the humanoid opportunity early. So that's why we launched the, the core ETF to really invest in the global humanoid related companies. So that's why we have COI. Yeah, you mentioned that Morgan Stanley uh, research with regards to the future of humanoid expansion. That is wild market expansion for something like this. How do you envision you and the team uh, kind of future use cases? When and where uh, might we see these sorts of things in our uh, in our day to day? As cool as they are. Yeah, I mean the intelligence of humanoid is improving every day with the like breakthrough of AI and the large language models. So we're gonna see this like first in the factories and doing some repetitive jobs like warehouses moving things around um, maybe like I think now going to more service sector like hospitals like hotels restaurants mm. and I think eventually we're gonna need like a humanoid as nanny or like helpers at home like doing laundries and like helping you organize the home so everything is possible right so with like multi tax you have like vision you can understand things understand the environment there's so many possibilities going forward. Yeah, I don't mind doing laundry, but it's not like the folding of the clean laundry after that's not my favorite. If I had one of these things around the apartment, now we'd be cooking. The full name of the ETF is Crane Shares Global Humanoid and Embodied Intelligence Index ETF. People may hear that phrase be a little unclear. What does embodied intelligence actually mean? Well, embodied intelligence is like AI that can move and that can just like doing actions in the real world because like, Previously, I think most people investing in artificial intelligence is happening in the digital world. It's all the tokens and all the data. But now you have the action environment, the interaction in the real world, is, we call that embodied AI. So that's why we launched the COID. It's like humanoid and a embodied AI. I believe you have 59 holdings right now in the ETF and include some bigger names like China Northern. Talk to me about the decisions from the team about the big names in the ETF space or the holdings that go in uh, as part of that ETF holding. Yeah, we think this is still like an early stage of the opportunity. So we take a very diversified approach. We have about like 50 names that really across the humanoid interpreters, intelligence, components, and materials. And uh, we have a global allocation across like US, China, Japan, Germany. So it's a very diversified approach to have a global portfolio that uh, not only doing business in humanoid, but also like the, there's a lot of suppliers for humanoid like manufacturers. Yeah, and the ETF listing first went up not that long ago. It was, it was shortly before you and I first met on June 5th. Since then, we are seeing shares up almost 20% or so. In terms of a pure play investment product, who do you most envision this ETF is for? I mean, like for any investors who want to just exclusively like tap into the humanoid opportunity. This is the first ETF to doing that, right? So we have been like investing in robotics generally for I think like a decade, but like I think that's outdated because like traditionally robotics is just like industrial arms and all those like like factory automation. But like I think going forward, you need humanoid to finish the last mile of automation within the factory. So humanoid is going to represent the next big thing after AI. I think in the net, net in the coming decade. 
Yeah, for someone who's watching the interview, maybe this person is even a casual investor in the stock market, but they're always looking to diversify. They're always looking to learn more, become more informed investors. What would you most want them to know about what you see as being the biggest opportunities in the future of a space like this, the general humanoid uh, embodied intelligence adjacent space? Well, I think like now everybody is now getting more familiar with these terms because yeah. like I think you have CEO of NVIDIA, Jensen Huang, is being vocal about it. Um, they being like have a big plan of humanoid and they just re recently released a, a chip just for humanoid. So I think it's getting more and more popular and this is so early. So investors should like spend some time, like you can check cranesuits.com slash coid to learn more about the more information about we're going to keep advocating investors about humanoid going forward. Yeah, amazing. And then of course, back to the robot itself, which is very cool. Remind me, first of all, what do you and the team call this thing? What am I supposed to call it? Well, we just call it Koibot. Koibot is like, um, it's like easy name, like yeah. people can remember, right? Yeah, of course. And of yeah. course, that's the ticker symbol for the ETF as well, K-O-I-D. Yep. Um, in terms of being a very, very cool, very inventive visual extension of the ETF, You've spent a lot of time at this point with this very cool thing. Uh, what are some of the features that it brings that kind of most impress you over the summer? Well, I think like people don't realize like how fast this little animal can really walk and run yeah. and do a lot of like like ja like gestures and like put on the sneakers and try on stuff and moving around like doing cool stuff. I think that's like making like people think that's like a concept, but now. Yeah we're seeing that in real life. So that makes a lot of difference. I, for one, welcome the future where humanoids are a part of our lives. As long as it can't quite yet host a television show and take my job, maybe that's still a few years off, but this is absolutely awesome. Congratulations to you and the team at Crane Shares for a great ETF product, at least in terms of uh, summer to date performance and for bringing this guy by. It's great to have you back on the show, Derek. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh.